You may want to write this down. God is good. Take your Bibles. We're going to open to uh, Psalms 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. It's wrapped up in that word, forget not. This is one of the things you just can't afford to forget. God is good all the time. All, all the time. The devil, he's bad. All the time. Now, we do ourselves a tremendous service if we could just remember the difference between the two. Hmm, wonder where it comes from. Here's the problem. The church of this nation has been so deprived of the real gospel that we have formulated ways of thinking that are anti-Christ in nature and they are called spiritual. They deny the very nature of God in that they embrace sickness and disease as a gift from God to help us to become better people. It's a lie from hell. I'm telling you it's blasphemy to attribute to God the very work of the devil. It is inconsistent to have Jesus pay a price for healing and for us to believe it's not God's intention to heal. Now here's the conflict. You prayed for somebody, they didn't get healed, they died. So we have to live now in this tension between what I understand and what I don't understand. And this is what happens throughout church history. It's because we have the puzzle. Aunt Martha died, we prayed, we fasted, we did everything we knew to do. It just must have been God who chose not to heal her. Well, is that true? You see, 2,000 years ago, God chose to heal her. That's why Jesus went and bore 39 stripes in his body. Enough stripes to remove all the flesh from his back till his internal organs are exposed. It was a payment that he made. It says that he was punished in the punishment that I deserve so that I could get what he deserved. How can he decide to not buy something he already bought? It's too late. It's already paid for. That's why the scripture declares by his stripes you were healed. The work was done. It is accomplished. It is finished. So why then do we live with problems that don't get solved and answered? What the church does then is we want answers so badly that we begin to invent and make up answers that make us feel good about our present condition. But to do it, we have to go over here take one of the absolutes that God has shown us about his goodness we bring it over here and we sacrifice it on the altar of human reasoning and so then we have people who will stand up and tell us God gave my relative leukemia to teach us perseverance no the Bible say? He forgives all your iniquities. He heals all your diseases. We would never think of somebody coming to the Lord and let's say they committed some horrible sin. And they came to the Lord and they come to me and say, uh, Bill, I, I, I was praying yesterday. I, I, I did something really stupid the day before and yesterday I was just praying. I, God, just forgive me. And God just spoke to me. He said, see, he really doesn't want to never enter our mind that God would in some way turn someone down who needed forgiveness of sin because we don't yet get it that when Jesus taught about physical affliction and the forgiveness of sin he taught about them in the same breath which is easier to say son your sins are forgiven you or pick up your bed and walk the Christian life is an invitation to live in between two 
conflicting realities because you see the cross is not bearing up under physical affliction. The sufferings of the Bible is not physical affliction. The sufferings of the scripture is living in between two conflicting realities and living with trust and praise at the same time. He's still good all the time. So why does the disease continue? Why does that addiction, why is it not broken? There are two situations in the New Testament that give us some sort of a hint. Jesus laid hands on a blind man, says, what do you see? He says, I see men as trees walking. For him to get the completion of the miracle that he needed, he needed a second touch from God. He needed persistence. There had to be a persistence on his part, a response from God to where he was completely healed. The second one is a father who has a tormented child. This demon throws the child in the water to drown him into the fire to kill him with fire. The father is so burdened and concerned, he brings him to Jesus. And he says, if you're able, you could help me. And Jesus said, if I'm able, the question is if you're able, if you're able to believe. The question has never been my ability, the question is, is you. So Jesus puts the responsibility for the impossible on another party, not on himself. Because he has no limitations and he is absolutely good all of the time. Jesus was the exact representation. He in the physical illustrated intimately in detail what the Father is like. So I ask you this. Is there any concept you have of God that you cannot substantiate or prove in the life of Christ? If there is, you need to change the way you think. Time to get before God and earnestly pray before you have a crisis to pray for. you got to hear me on this. It's, it's vital. Anybody can pray in crisis. Show me somebody who will earnestly pray without a crisis. And I'll show you someone who will solve the crisis when it comes.